family, partner relationship, marriage, on the on the job type of things because it deals with kind of mental health because some of these things they start in the home. Um, so because that worked out so well for me and I do poetry and music therapy in some of my groups as well. But I wanted to because of a lot of things I went through and I reached out to the church. And even when I was younger, I didn't get the help that I needed and I didn't have a voice. So God has given me this vision to take that into the church for the training and having the discussion uh, why there are so many mental health issues within the church with divorces, suicide, pastors becoming drug addicts within a couple of months. Uh, mm-hmm. And this has went on in the church for a while, but no one talks about it because we were taught to get over it. Um, bang, bang, bang. Whatever you're going through, just get over it and suppress it. Mm-hmm. But the thing that hit me the most is when my mother told me a lot of things that she went through that she never talked about, she just prayed. And when they diagnosed her with dementia, she could not filter. And she talked about everything all the way to when she was a teenager up until before she had me. And I asked my mother because she has been an evangelist, missionary, uh, the mother of mothers, worked in the community. And I always thought my mother didn't go through anything. And when she told me some of the things that had happened to her, happened in her family, I tried to tell my pastor, her pastor, when she was retired, my mother needs healing. And if God had not chose me to possess the land to go in to comfort my mother, nobody would have been able to go and deal with the stuff that she was dealing with. And so that's why it's so important for me, because it was inspired by my mother and the things that I went through when I did not have a voice to educate the church because my mother ended up after giving it to the community, paying her tithes, not wanting to even leave that church when her pastor left. She gave, gave her everything, even lift up the chairs when there were young people that didn't go and lift them up. And then when she went through, her mother was going through something. Whether they didn't understand what the, the, the diagnosis of dementia was, they always say all times are dementia. You keep them in that normal activity that they were in. My mother praised the Lord. She prayed. And those are the things that I reminded her of. And the Lord told me, you're going to do these things in remembrance of me. To help her to remember me. And if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have remembered when I would read the Bible to her. And I would see the Holy Ghost would just, it would just, it would, the anointing would just come over her. And when I took gave the Bible, she said, I remember that because she was going backwards. And as I was telling somebody else, I would watch this presenter and they say, just be in the chair with her for this moment. In the moment, you get to learn who your mother is in that moment. Every moment may be different, but in that moment, learn who your mother is and let God guide you. I went through the classes. I got facilitation. I called all timers. I educated myself. But the best education I had with my mother was God because he created her. And every day was different. But God told me what to do with my mother. And But I did not, I wasn't fearful of it. I did not say it's so bad that I can't be there, but she needed somebody. And the last word when she said to me when I was in Kentucky and she was in Arkansas, she said, I asked God for you. And the child that thought that she was the black sheep, that felt like her, was not approved by her mother, but the rest of them was. My mother chose, my mother said to God, she asked for me. The one that went through, the one that would know what it felt like. Then that's what a peer is. When you finally get to the point that you say, I need help, but I need somebody that would understand what I'm going through. And she knew that God had chosen me to take the mantle. And so that's why, if nobody could understand anything, that this is so important to me. Because I want to cry. Not because I'm hurting, but because I'm giving my mother a voice. Because peer means so much to me that if today I feel like I want to talk to my mother and I miss her, I can go to a peer support meeting myself. And say today, this is how I feel. And I feel ashamed and not feel like I lost my faith. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm trusting in God because I'm not just sitting in a room and just saying I don't want to push anymore, but it helps me push to be around other people that are pressing just as well, that believe in God, that know the word of God, and not using a title and think they're so high up that I'm scared because they say if I say I need help, and that's what they did back then, if you have sinned, you've lost your faith. Even when I got sick one time and I went to the office, they said there was something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, this is why this is important. And I'm trying to get partners that have went through domestic violence, that have went through depression, that have maybe went through suicide, wanted to commit suicide because of a grieving of a couple of a loss. They have been there, but God brought them through that. Mm-hmm. That they don't feel like they titled, they didn't went so far that they can forget where God has brought them from, and mm-hmm. to listen to the individual and not override and think that you got the answers for everything but listen and then ask God what to say and I know that there are ethics for peer but he can also show you how to obey the law and that's one thing I did not do when my brother took guardianship I was supposed to respect his guardianship but I was supposed to pray it was not my responsibility to try to change my brother and make him do what I felt he should have done. But I should have respected, but then also went to God for what I saw that was wrong. So when it comes to the peer, yes, it has ethics, yes, it has boundaries, and I'm going to stay with that. But at the same time, when that door opens up and God knows said, here is that door, and you're still obeying the ethics of peer, now I want to speak, and I'm going to guide you in what to say. Because every, everything that I do, I want to put God first, and he's going to be there with me. Um, so that's the part of the partner. But then also on my website, I also want to be able to have some of the ones that are peer specialists that do have their certification to be able to host groups. Uh, sometimes my technology, because I've been, I've been you know, doing computers ever since 1983. So... When God gives me a vision, my vision may be going beyond because I'm sitting there on pay here and it's like, can y'all do this or can y'all do this? And they say, we ain't got it yet. So God has given me a vision that goes beyond where I am now that I want to be able to give the peer specialist that will come on my platform to be able to help others, whether they feel like they specialize in grieving, uh, depression, uh, recovery as long as they have a certification uh, and so what's coming from the the, uh, the 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 partners and just like Alicia was saying she wants to get involved with transportation transitional housing and I empower people and it's given me equipped me with so many tools that as my mother say freely give what God freely gave to you I want to empower people I am a developer I, with computers, these are tools, I, multiple tools that God has given me, and I empower people, and I develop, and I place people where I feel that this is their passion. People don't have, maybe they don't have computer skills, technology skills, they don't have this, and so you find out what that gift is that God has given them, and then help them to get to what that vision that God is trying to push forth and birth that baby within them, and so this is what this platform is for me and especially with mental health pastors and those are my my coverings those are the ones that pray for uh, what I'm doing I have one more pastor that I have to add on there but they pray for me uh, and God has already given the word for me and what I'm doing and the people that will be coming and helping me network I have one that has sold into the ministry Deborah goes out and feeds the homeless uh, she also does street ministry. So then you have somebody else that does transportation. Uh, I'm trying to, they do have a grief share, and I have someone that did a uh, support group that was a help to me when I was in Kentucky. God is going to bring it here because that's what they used to say about the church. The church was like a hospital. And my mother said, whatever you needed, God placed it in the church, whether it was a doctor, whether it was a lawyer, whether it was, you know, they taught so in service. 
You don't have to go to the government. You don't have to, because it was right there in the church. And so God wants to bring that back, you know. People out there on the street don't have a place to stay. It's cold outside. And we have resources. We have people with a vision. And God wants to bring us back to that. Thank you for healing me from all abuse and shame. Thank you, Lord. Abuse is what I was facing. Emotions ran past. Guilt was in my heart. And love fell fast. But I know that everything is a lesson learned. So I have to grow from it. Pressure came on every turn. But I thank God for keeping me. Thank God. And the thing about it, we can hear the we can hear the passion, we can hear the love, we can hear the heart, and that that can be part because when we come in with a sincere heart, we got God checks that heart, and He wants us to make sure we check our heart. And uh, I love that because that's the new heart is as well. It's, it's it's for the people and the Father's will being done. So when we go down, so Brother Keith, on the fourth Sunday of every month, we're downtown at Lynn Park in front of City Hall at 8 o'clock in the morning. We do a full service. So we do the praise and worship. We give coffee and breakfast and um, we give food away. We give clothes away. But we do that after the service, right? So we have a praise and worship. We have a few minutes of spoken, what we call spoken words. And really it's ministering like we do at a church. But you, you know, you're not there um, the whole time. I mean, uh, for over an hour. We're there. Yeah, sometimes we're over an hour because we stay there and we talk to the people. Uh, but we also will give them spiritual food and we also give them physical food. We also call a prayer line for those that want to come into the prayer line. And this is all outside. And before the pandemic happened, we had been doing this uh, every Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning for nine. Um, and then after the pandemic happened, they put a stop to it. And... Uh, so the young man that's been doing it, you might know him, he drives this red truck that says, Jesus, really big on it. And, uh, but he's retired, and so he turned it over to Pastor Short T. So we all go out with Pastor Short T and start it back up, but we're doing it the fourth Sunday of every month. So, uh, if, you know, I was telling uh, Short that, so, uh, you know, that, that's the passion of giving back to Father's people. And I do it because, number one, Father gave me that passion, but I, when I came to Birmingham, I was going through a divorce, and I came here to live in a shelter for battered women, three weeks after burying one of my twin daughters, and I was in my, my, my 20s at that time, and I was so my, I went through a lot of changes, but I thank God that there was a shelter that was set to me and my little boy, uh, who was five at the time, and just, just to have, have a place, you know, and I was really considered homeless, and, um, but I thank God that he made a way uh, all these years later. I've learned through that, and that's been my testimony, because I don't just do downtown Lynn Park for the homeless. I also sing at uh, uh, the Love Navy Center shelters, um, at uh, nursing homes. Uh, uh, we just did a we did over at the retirement center at um, oh God, what did we call it? the region the regions over there uh, over in green over in Homewood is beautiful beautiful view but I just thank God that He keeps He's opening doors and when we're grateful and can give back to His people even Proverbs says that when you give to the poor you lend it to your father. How in the world can we earth suit created by our Father lend to Him? And I'm not doing it because, but I do thank God for Him showing me that. Because I'm doing it from my heart because, for one, I love to give back. And my mother was like that. My mom would feed the homeless. would take all ten of her children. My dad didn't go with us, but my mom would take all ten of us and we would be feeding the people. We, that's what we call them. We call them God's people. So I hear the passion. And that's what we need to even get this started. So I'm loving how Father is bringing all of us together, and we all have input. We respect each other enough to, you know, pray for one another, which is very important, and pray about this this group because um, 
this year great things are happening and we're, we're being positioned. Did he not say that he would prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemy? There, we've all had, we know our enemies are invisible, but he also has earthly agents that work for him that totally have given themselves over to doing evil or doing bad things or thinking on bad things for people. So I thank God that he's doing just what his word says. He, he, uh, he loves us enough to make us be a part of it, to, to invite us to be a part of it. I love it when everything is falling in place. I'm just grateful for the opportunity. So I want to also invite you, Brother Keith, to come out one Sunday morning. We don't, right now, like I said, we're only doing this on the fourth Sunday, right in front of City Hall. I've got to send Chris the uh, address to City Hall. Uh, I mean, the Lynn Park. And uh, I'll, I'll send it to Chris and she can pass it along. See what's going on. But we got to remember that we don't allow, it's the little boxes that mess things up. Uh, the spirit of anger, the spirit of disrespecting each other. Or, you know, those are things that we as believers, I was listening to this one lady talk about how she loves God so much and one night she was sleeping and she just, um, you know, in her sleep she saw her body come out, her, I mean, her spirit come out of her body and she uh, saw an angel and she was like, what am I doing up here? You know, like she was at the, in the ceiling. She was on the ceiling, and she said and she saw these little spirits around her bed, but the angels did not respond to her, and 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 she heard them talking. And they said, "We know we got to figure out how to get to her because she's been praying too much. We got to we got to, to distract her. She's single. Let's let's find a man that 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 will break her." And they were like, "No, she loves God. She loves God too much to mess up that way." And, they, and then they went through all these different things, and one of them said, but wait, she, like, she gets angry quickly. She gets angry, and she just say things. You know, no profanity, but, you know, we have to be careful of myself. I'm, I'm talking about me. Careful when we, what we let out of our mouth, because that life is in it. Our words are fire. So she was saying how she heard them say, oh, we, we'll, we'll send a spirit of anger. We'll send some uh, agents, agents to get her caught up in stuff at work, lie on her, accuse her of something. So we got to get her off frame so much so we can attack her that way and get, and that's our open door. It doesn't take big things, what we think of as big sins. It's the little thing that messes us up. And I believe there's enough uh, people, enough uh, uh, churches, enough uh, Christians that got things going on or, 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 or influencers, but yet, you know, we don't want to get caught up in uh, scandals or we're, we're definitely not backbiters, you know, but we do have to be careful of not allowing the spirit of anger. And she was saying when she saw that, she said, oh, well, then the angel started sharing with her. This is what you need to see because you have got to, God's given us all the power. He's given, she, he was letting her know that God's given us power over all the powers of the enemies, but we have to control ourselves. He never gave us authority over people. He gave us authority over uh, uh, the demons. So we have we we, we got to make sure we on a daily basis basis checking ourselves. So when we come before people, it's really God works through us. And then He gives us the right thing to say. Then we know how to handle the situation. I'm I'm serious. We're learning as we grow. as we go. We're growing day by day, so we can pass this test and get out of middle school. Okay, spiritual school, we're, we're up in age physically, but we're still growing spiritually. So we got to get out of middle school and, and graduate and go into uh, high school, college, things like that. Thing about the, the different things that may come up with the anger or whatever like that, this is also going to teach us, and I don't know if I'm saying the right word, diversity, where you're dealing with different culture, different types of religion. Uh, you may have some people on the platform that are counselors, clinical, uh, that come from it because it's going to be coming from different approaches and that's the reason why we're doing the round table because one time Keith may decide to come from a counselor's point of view that may be different from a the Christian point of view because you can be a minister but you have to go through the ethics of a counselor or the ethics of a peer or the ethics of a um, a chapel, uh, different ways, and at the same time, you can ask God, you can pray, 
and do, you know, do things like, like what I did. You know, there was one way that my family handled with my mother, but I could have prayed in the background knowing that I didn't have guardianship. I don't have control over this in the earthly realm, but God can do what I cannot do. So we have to know that the platform may have that type of diversity in it and people coming from different perspectives and us being able to listen and say, even if you disagree, but in your mind, I agree to disagree, but you, you don't have to disrespect, even though you might not see it that way or it's coming from a different point of view. Uh, it's just the way that if that's your job that you're doing, is that you, you're you under signing, it's almost like signing an oath or signing because there's a peer. We have to, we've signed our name to do it a certain type of way. So you have to respect in, in that. So it's not that I don't understand coming it from, because in my mind, just like you're talking, I may be talking about open doors, about demonic. Well, when I have my peer groups, I cannot talk about that unless there is a door that's opened up and they speak it to me. Once they speak it to me and they already know and they already go to church, they know about it and, and they want to talk more about it, it's an open door for me to talk about it. But other than that, it's almost like I can only go as far as the door that they leave open for me. And they might just say, I want transportation. <laughs> and that's all that I can give to them. So like I said, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to be able just to hear because that's a part of when we had our peer training, we understood what clinical do, what councils do, what peer do, what all of these different titles do. And we know this is what we don't do, but we do understand their role in that process. So um, it's the same thing if you would even add in there what pastoral care does or what a minister does. You know, we want to know what all of these, what they all do, what all, you know, they participate in, in the community, because it, 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 it's different roles. We're not in competition, and that's what we do here. We support what you do, Keith. I want to understand and learn everything that you're doing and support your ministry, what you're doing in the community. I want to support Jazz, because I think that we're supposed to be there for each other. It's not supposed to be a competition, but we're supposed to be the body, one helping the other. And so right. that's another thing right. that I'm trying to bring to people's attention too. You know, we don't have to be fighting and saying that she's better than me. She's better. God has given us all something. We all have gifts. And exactly. there's only one God, there's only one vision. But he's given us something, tools, that we work together to support each other. So uh, I'm going to be supporting what she's, she's doing. Amen. 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 But thank you for that. And I also want to say thank you for bringing Alicia to me. I got a chance to speak to her and, and hear her heart, where her heart was uh, for the mental health uh, and, and what she desires to do. And I'm, I'm willing to help her and whatever God has freely given to me to empower her. But I think that God is going to get ready to do something special for her, uh, I'm giving her time and volunteering. And even since she said she don't care if she got paid, she just has a heart for it. But I think in doing that, God is going to really do something. And I'm going to give it all that I can to be able to pour back into her life. So, Amen. so that's about it. All right. So I think we did good tonight. Uh, I appreciate you coming. Can you do me one favor, Keith? Can you uh, pray us out? Oh, yeah, sure. Our most precious in heaven. First of all, we want to give you thanks for allowing us to be here and to bless us with the vision, giving us a measure of faith to do what we need to do, oh God. We ask that you forgive our shortcomings, and we forgive those who have uh, uh, fallen short of. Lord, we pray that you uh, provide provision for the truth, oh God, so that many lives can be touched in your name, oh God. And Lord, you will get the glory and the honor. We thank you. We magnify you and now as we go as we step forward here, Lord, we now will separate from each other. Uh, give us the grace, uh, whether it was travel or whatever we need to do, Lord, we ask that you will be with us always. We know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Am
Look at me, look at me. 